So hi there folks, welcome back to Monster Loves You with me, Sharon. Um, here we are, uh, we've got to balance, we're going to try and balance the opinions of monsters versus humans, basically, to try and make peace between monsters and humans. Um, now, I was, I was talking about this to Valerius earlier, and I was saying that um, it would be quite fun to like make the humans like the monsters, but make the monsters hate the humans, so that like when the humans come over, the monsters just completely annihilate them. Um, and I suspect that the Ring of Achievements around the start menu could well be involved with that. But for this first playthrough, um, I might do it with us, we'll see. We're going to try and do it proper. We're going to try and balance the opinions between monsters and humans. Um, so first off, we'll start, we're in the monster town. So we'll talk to the monsters and see if we can find a way to sort of improve their opinion of humans. Um, well, let's start with this house. That's like a good starting point, doesn't it? Blistery proposes a new plan to keep an eye on the humans. What is it? We'll take over an abandoned house in Carmen, keep someone in there at all times, and take extensive notes on everything they do. Mm. That's a good plan. Several other elders seem to like the idea very much. They argue about where to establish their spy house, though. Carmen has many empty buildings. Which shall we use? Ruin everything. Suggest somewhere humans will look bad. Oh, I see. Suggest a place that will require, encourage understanding. Uh, fools who need many eyes in many buildings. So I'm guessing this sort of middle ground one here uh, will encourage the monsters to sort of watch the humans peacefully and see them in their best lights. We'll go with that. And we've got good high cleverness score, so we should succeed in this. The expedition sets out immediately, hiding in the unused upper floor of the library. They observe humans reading and learning. Uh, make sure they see that humans are smart. Oh, yes. In short order, several elders learn to read for the first time. They seem impressed with their unsuspecting human subjects. Wow, that was a dramatic shift. 18%. Um, does that affect the overall view? Or do we have to go a bit further? Oh, they still dislike and fear humans, but we're getting closer. That's, that was a pretty successful one. Um, okay, let's try. Let's do another monster one and see if we can push that up into whatever the next sort of bracket is. And then we'll go to the human village. Um, let's do feather. Let's do the feather. You're arguing with Elder Imurg, who is much older than you, but a little slow in the uptake. She insists that humans don't farm chickens. Explain they do in fact farm chickens. Maybe she's trying to drop the subject. Agree that humans never do good things. Um, let's explain they do in fact farm chickens. You go on about how plump and delicious the chickens become under human protection and how many eggs they produce in the wooden nest boxes. Emerg rolls her eyes, unimpressed. Show that she's too cowardly to have seen the farms up close, which requires ferocity. Bring back a chicken from a farmer's proof requires bravery. Now, we have a lot of bravery. We could easily do this. I like this one. Let's do it. You have no trouble getting onto a farm. You return with a chicken so fat it looks like a feathered balloon. Show off the chicken. Ooh, plus hey, impressed, Emerg accepts the chicken and takes a bite. Another elder says maybe the humans do have some redeeming qualities. Uh, up to 46 and the, the icon has changed. So I think we're doing well there. Monsters are ambivalent about humans. Uh, that's a good place to be. Let's see if we can make the humans ambivalent about monsters. Let's go to the human city. Uh, I like this hanging off a cliff one. Let's go with this. You watch as an elderly human tries to fix his house. He looks up at the leaky roof with a sigh and as it starts to rain and goes inside. How bad is the leak? Looks like a trickle of water will get into the attic from this storm. It might do some damage to the human's house. He also left his tools out. Uh, so we can steer clear. It's too dangerous. We can brave the rain and danger to repair the roof, which requires bravery. It's got an awful lot of... It's got a sort of weird ellipsis there as well, which is a bit weird. Kindly protects his tools from the rain. Requires kindness. It's only letting in some of the rain. <laughs> Brackets. Fix it. So that's obviously to sabotage it. Um, but we're trying to help. We're trying to help. So I guess we'll try and repair the roof with our bravery. We should pass this. Oh, yeah. Success. The human hears hammering above. He emerges just as you leap away. The repairs are finished. Wow. That was successful. Right. Let's do another human one. Um, let's do, let's do this pointy guy. 
An older human and many children sit in rows in a hot, echoing room. The older human drones on while the children look at everything but him, the windows, the clock, even your hiding spot. What is the human saying? He's telling them about lifeology. You know about that, but judging from his expression, he doesn't seem to find it very interesting himself. Step in and show him how to teach. <laughs> Stir things up, this is what they're doing. Uh, let's do it. Let's step in and teach him some shit. You burst into the classroom and everyone stops to stare at you. For one precious moment, nobody does anything. Talk about the attitude behind doctoring. Tell them about the workings of living things. Oh, this is interesting. Now, our kindness score is not too high, so we're probably better going with the cleverness one. Our cleverness is pretty damn high. Um, so let's do it. Let's tell them about the workings of living things. You begin your lecture smoothly explaining how the heart pumps blood and just how many miles of veins and arteries they have in their bodies. The whole class listens, fascinated. You're well into the second hour of your lecture when a bell rings. The teacher says, I'm sorry, that's all we have time. That's all the time we have. Wrap things up. As the children leave, they chatter and laugh. You've made some new friends today. Okay, plus 18 to our views. Oh my god. We've pushed the humans up brilliantly. Are they still ambivalent? They are ambivalent. So this is going well. We shouldn't have too much trouble as long as we don't do anything to really fuck it up. Um, so humans are slightly higher, so let's work on monsters next. Let's do this laughing monster. That looks like a good one. Greed Blitz, puffed up with multisyllabic importance, addresses the other elders. My fellow monsteran, he begins, I propose we meet the humans halfway. <laughs> what, in that meadow near the forest? No, he clears the throat. I think we should learn from them and adopt human ways to become more civilised. Um, use the tricks against them start an explorer to commit to look into the matter I think we'll go with the cleverness route again to be honest here agree and explain some human innovations oh yes you make a persuasive case under your tutelage the other gathered elders learn much about organisation governing the human way oh yeah Um, monsters are up to 64 is that a new new tier. Some monsters like humans. Excellent. Well, we'll leave the monsters there for now. We'll go back to the humans. See if we can get them to do the same thing. Uh, this friendship icon looks like quite a good one. Let's try this. You're hiding in a shiny wood building. Two humans are holding hands in front of another human. He makes a lot of noise about a witness. The other two look around disappointed at the empty room. Um, so, I mean, straight away, this first option is standing out. Pull your hat over your head and offer to be a witness. Obviously, a human wedding here requires bravery. We've got a lot of bravery. We can get away with this. We can do it. They're delighted. Humans all take turns talking. And talking. <laughs> and talking. And talking. Yes. <laughs> Eventually, the two holding hands make kiss faces at each other. They sign a paper and hand it to you. Uh, take the pen and do the same. You make a pretty squiggle. Beautiful. The pair thanks you profusely and you bow. Whoops, the hat fell off. Oh dear, they've spoiled it. The humans gasp, but you stand your ground unafraid. After a moment, they thank you. Okay. Jesus Christ, this is going so well. Uh, we'll work on the monsters again next, I think. Uh, let's, do, let's do this sneaky looking one. Gobclaws unrolls a big map showing the surrounding region. She points one pincer at a series of red circles. These are places where I've seen humans drop things. I think we should put garbage cans there. Uh, why specifically? Go close, say, so we can harvest the things they, they drop. We can study them and understand them better. Well, let's just go for it. Great, help her develop the plan. You get things in order and help Gobclaws arrange the cans so they'll be easy to collect later. Yay for organisation. You and Gobclaws sneak through the woods to the new designated human evidence collection locations or DHECLs, and place the extra cans. Yay, acronyms! <laughs> Except that wasn't an acronym. Ah, <laughs> we got them there. Almost immediately, humans begin dropping trash into the cans, including many candy wrappers with bits of sweetness still inside. <laughs> Yay, licking dirty candy wrappers! Gobclaws prepares a report based on the preliminary findings, and everyone agrees that she's quite clever, and so are you. Monsters View Humans plus eight sort of it's in the way now we've got to wait for it to disappear 72 and 74 we need to work on the monsters a bit more we've got seven days left i think we're i think we're gonna see this as a resounding success let's take let's take the sleepy thing you're just concluding a thrilling speech to the other elders finally something goes smoothly 
Oh, God. Snork, snark, rag, rock, snork. What in snack is that noise? Old Hamrag fell asleep in the middle of your speech. Again, his pig legs snouts and four nostrils give his snores a poignant yet thunderous quality. Cough gently. You'd have better success whispering at the moon. Hamrag keeps snoring. Talk louder to be heard over the snoring. Hamrag wakes up. He looks around and says, You know, humans are pretty nasty. They sharpen rocks and cut things with them. Also, they kill each other all the time. Um, oh God. I mean, I suppose we could try and persuade him that they don't. Requires honesty, though. Honesty is not one of our good, uh, our good traits. We could try fighting Hamrag with ferocity. I mean, we have high ferocity, but will that help the relations or not? God, I really don't know. I really don't know. And I can't check our honesty score from here. Because we're sort of... We can't back out of this. Shit. Oh, let's go for it. Let's try the ferocity angle. Let's see where it takes us. You never know. Oh, yes. You thrash Hamrag with ease. He's big, but he's slow these days. And never less than half asleep. Your further words on human development fall on a nervous but receptive crowd. Oh, so we just about managed to bully people into going with us on that one. Uh, so let's let's do the humans again. Let's try this upside down monster. What is this place? You're in a dark, dank, woody room that smells like old jaggery. Mosey on in. Humans sit at a long counter and drink what looks like foamy cider. They seem sad and a little confused. Ah, a drinking place. After a bit, you see that there's a stool open, so you climb up and plop down on it. One of the humans starts muttering about his problems. Uh, I guess strike up a conversation with the human. That's probably going to be the best solution. My wife just took my jellyfish and my dog just ran away. He goes on and on about what sounds like a pretty awful situation. Listen on, he seems so sad already. Give him some gentle but tough love. Um, let's just listen on. I mean, obviously this guy's drunk. He's, uh, he's in his cups, as the Games of Thrones would say. Let's listen to him. Let's be a sort of attentive ear. You keep listening, clamping down the earth to try and solve his problems before he's done complaining about them. Keep listening. He goes on and on, calling you Mac. He talks about pigskins and some sort of a bowl that he lost. Offer to help him find the bowl? He laughs, though it looks like he won't find it. He seems happier after talking to you. The doctor is in. He finishes his last drink and gives you a little pointing salute. You monsters is good people. Oh, wow. We got a massive, massive boost there, 92%, uh, which means humans love monsters. Oh, yeah. So now we've just got to balance the monsters out a little bit. Shouldn't be too difficult. Let's go for the warning sign. Elder Riddy wants to stop using electricity from the humans. It's making us less monstrous, he explains, and it is a human thing through and through. Uh, we happen to know quite a bit about electricity. You shuffle forward and raise one claw, clearing your throat. All the elders turn to look. Briddy says, ah, you agree with me? Um, Describe why electricity is great requires honesty. Show how violent electricity is requires ferocity. Now, we have high ferocity. We should be able to succeed at this. Will it persuade them that electricity is good? Probably. Let's do it. You leap up and grab an overhead electrical line, ripping it open. Sparking black fluid showers to the ground. You dance in it, surrounded by a halo of weird energies. The fuck did I do that for? Indeed, the elders back away slowly from your terrible display. They clap and cheer. As you black out, Riddy changes his plan to using electricity as a weapon. Um, but that did seem to improve their view on them, so I guess, I guess that's fine. Right, we've got we've only got four left on the monsters to sort of push them up. We're getting closer. Let's go with the puddle. Elder Prudence is tiring of the debate about living alongside the humans. Prudence says they can't even eat a squirrel without killing it first. Their bodies are only slimy around their assorted holes. Why bother to talk to them? Uh, we're best off keeping our distance forever. She slumps down, disgusted. Um... Humans kill their food to spare them pain. Do you want to agree with the accuser of cowardice unbefitting a monster? That's probably a slightly easier option, but um, this might improve the relations even higher. This might give us just the boost we need to max it out. Uh, let's take the risk. Let's see if we can do this. Oh, failure. Prudence doesn't buy it, and neither does the crowd. She grunts. You know nothing of kindness. You're wrong. 
Uh, yeah, to be honest, our kindness is only 54, so I guess that was a bit risky, but we can still work on them. Let's try this one. Elder Gobclaws rages at the other monsters. She crushes some stray lizards as she screams, Admit it, humans are dangerous. Let us smash them to bits. Oh, honesty. Honesty is a bit better than kindness for us, I think. Let's try that one. Success! You list ways in which humans can kill monsters, but then you point out that they make artifacts such as the ones Gobclaws collects. She stares at you. Stare back. She folds her arms and nods. The other monsters mumble and nod too. An elder in the back says, You always speak the truth. I can hear it in your voice now. Ah, excellent. So, 96 and 92. We've got two days left. So, ideally, we want to hit both of these up to 100. But we, I reckon we've already got this in the bag, to be honest with you. So, we'll do one monster, one human, I guess. Should we do a human first? Let's do a human first. Um... Didn't we do this sneaky door one? I'm sure we did. Let's try this speedy thing. Alleys are a great place to find artifacts. Less so to find fat, small, crying human children. One such fat, small child wanders over to you clutching a lollipop. Uh, no, we better not eat him. Ask it what's wrong. The human child says, I'm lost. Do you know how to get to Plough Street? I think I stepped in poop. Uh, find an adult human, no matter the risk to you, requires bravery. Now, that's quite a good idea, because we've got high bravery score. Helping him find his way might give us a bigger boost, but it requires kindness, which is our lowest score. So we'll go with the bravery route. You drag the child, still crying, onto the sidewalk. A loud human in a louder dress swoops down the child, clucking and bussing. Uh, wave to her or sneak away? Let's wave to her. Let's go all, all the way. Oh, yes. She waves back before she realises you're a monster. She shakes her head and stammers out her thanks. The child laughs and waves goodbye to you, and bemused his mother does the same. 100%. We get it. Humans now fucking love monsters. Oh, my God. 100%. We've got one day left to try and make the monsters love humans just as much. But we're out of time, folks, so I'm going to leave it there. Uh, come back next episode to see if we succeed. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.